Once we've done that, um, we can go back and we can uh, add a bootstrapper class that will be referenced by our application. And in that bootstrapper class, uh, we inherit from Unity Bootstrapper. And we override certain methods. The first one that we override is the logger facade. I'll show you why in just a moment here. Um, in this case, I am returning for the create logger method a new logger. And where this is helpful, I'll run the option, uh, application just to show you. Even though our application is not very spectacular. <laughs> what that gives us is, um, in this case, in my uh, log for net uh, logging location specified by my config file, show you here Prism using that logger in debug will give you all the steps that occur during the bootstrapping process. First one is creating the logger. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, what gave us the ability to do this. You can see that we're creating a module catalog and configuring it, creating the Unity container and configuring it, um, and then doing a few more things that are related to the region and uh, Unity itself. Then we're creating the shell, um, setting up the region manager, updating any regions, initializing the shell, and then initializing the modules. There's a few of these steps that we're going to be interested in and that we're going to override in our uh, initial method here. Um, other than creating the logger, the other one's creating the shell. Remember I talked about the shell being the main window of the application. In this case, the shell window here. So in our bootstrapper, we're going to return a new shell window as the shell. Um, they share a base class of dependency objects, so that's how it's able to do that. Um, once doing this from then on, um, Prism will um, understand that window to be the shell as far as it's concerned. And then we're going to initialize the shell, and within here, here is where we take the shell, typing it as a window, and telling our current application that this is the main window that we want you to show. Uh, this is the code um, that you need to use if you're not going to be using the startup URI that uh, normally comes when you create a WPF um, application. So by saying app current main window show, that is what's going to make our shell appear when we run the application. There's our basic little shell window uh, with no regions or anything in it quite yet. So that's the basic setup process um, for our demo uh, PRISM application. Now let's go look at a more complete version of the application. So here we have um, a, another version of our PRISM demo uh, to which we're going to add um, some modules and um, see a little bit more detail. In this version of the PRISM demo, the shell window is a little bit more complex. We have uh, referenced an XML namespace for PRISM, which is www.codeplugs.com slash PRISM. Then down within the, the contents uh, of our design, let's look at the design here, we're going to have a header region, and we're going to have a body region, and then again, uh, although you can't see it visually here, we're going to have a modal region that will fill the entire uh, UI. Let's look at the XAML on that. Here we have a content control <coughs> called header content that is marked up with um, a Prism Region Manager region name of header region. Uh, when Prism is initialized, when this shell is um, shown, uh, Prism is going to detect this um, and is going to know that this is the header region. Down below we have a tab control that is marked up as being the body region. Again, Prism is going to be able to detect this as the body region uh, and we can inject um, 
views into the, this region. Um, every time you add a, a view to a tab control, uh, it becomes another tab within the tab control, whereas with something like a content control, um, it'll just take over the, the, the uh, visual um, aspect of the uh, content control, and that's all you're going to see. So we make use of that down below here with the modal uh, content control where nothing is going to be in there until we want to have it fill up the entire space um, and act kind of like a modal dialog. So again, it is marked with a region name of modal region. Now to uh, make the um, development of this application a little bit easier um, and fill out some of the methods of the bootstrapper that we haven't done yet, um, we should add an infrastructure project uh, to our solution. Uh, the infrastructure project is going to contain references to things like um, the region names uh, to make it a little easier throughout the application, <clears throat> uh, contain references to services and so on. Uh, I have already created a project for this purpose um, within the application. Than the solution called Prism Demo Infrastructure. And in here, um, I have a couple of folders. Um, I've also got uh, my region names, which is just a class, which has my header region, the body region, and the modal region we've talked about, and another one, customer region, that we haven't talked about quite yet. I've got a model service um, interface. So if I create a service to get some data as my model. Um, I've got an interface that I can uh, work with. And I've got some events that we'll see in, in a little bit. Um, in this case, uh, the events are for hiding and showing an application message that will appear in the modal region um, of our shell. Now let's go look at the bootstrapper again. In our bootstrapper, <clears throat> along with creating the logger that we had before, uh, we've added two new overrides. First one is for creating the module catalog. If you recall during the slide presentation, I mentioned that we're going to be doing that in code as opposed to the other methods of uh, doing it through a config file or doing it through a, a directory. Um, this is the simplest way, in general, to uh, create your catalog. I've got two that I have mentioned here. I've got them commented out right now. The dashboard module and the customer module, um, which we will see in a moment. Um, I've also got uh, an override here for the container configuration, where I specify a service, uh, in this case, um, the model service which we have specified in our uh, infrastructure. So we're going to need to add uh, two modules, and we're going to need to add a service if we're going to refer to uh, the service that we have defined in our infrastructure. Well, how do you add a module? Well, it, in, in practice, a module is a class library uh, that contains at least uh, one class, uh, which is by um, convention named uh, whatever the feature is, module. In this case, we're going to have a dashboard module and a customer's module. Um, so let's go ahead and add that to our uh, project here. Uh, once again, I already have these ready. So I'm going to pick my dashboard module here. Um, and I'll hold off on the customer for a moment. In my it's just a class library project that I call Prism Demo Dashboard. I added, um, after using NuGet to um, add my references to Prism, like we had with our UI, I created a dashboard module that implements Prism's iModule interface. And this is going to be the code uh, in the initialize method that is going to start up our module and be able to enable us to um, 
provide the features, uh, the views and the view models, so forth uh, for this module. Thank <music> you.